Fair play. <laughs> I, I love it, man. <laughs> what? You, you ever wonder why? If uh, if p- petrol is uh, so bad for humans, why does it smell so good? <laughs> Hello guys, how you doing? Welcome back to Jack Makes Happy. I felt like I shouted that a bit loud, so sorry about your eardrums out there. We are joined by Stevie. You are. Jordan. You all right? And an impressionist, a comedian. It's Josh Berry. How you doing, mate? Not very good. Uh, I'm <laughs> James Acaster, Pat Springleaf, but most of the time, <laughs> I'm Josh Berry. It's good to be here, mate. Thanks very much. Already, I just want to say, impressionist, there's a lot of them out there. You seem to break the mould of, of, of that in a way, and, and you do impressions of people that I've never seen anyone else do. Is that, is that, is that something that you, you pride yourself on? Is that the dream for most impressionists, then? I think, I think it's important to be unique when you're doing impressions, yeah, because like, I think most impressionists like, will trot out some of the, the normal ones. You know, like Donald Trump. Everyone's got a Donald Trump. <laughs> bigly, bigly great, let me just say. It's very, very good to be here on Jeff's podcast. <laughs> Jeff, I, I love, I love your videos. I think they're, they're bigly fantastic. You know, so everyone does that more sort of like, they're not generic impressions, but they're kind of impressions that you have to have. But yeah, I guess what distinguishes you is different ones like Acaster and, and people like that. Well, why do you think that they, that you need those sort of generic? Are they just big box stickers for like? I think so. I used to like when I first started doing impressions, I was like, ah. Oh, you don't need those. I'm just going to come out and do like an hour of niche comedians, right? Which didn't go very well. Right. Um, but I think, yeah, audiences like Trump, despite you know yeah. the kind of national, international outrage at him. They they <clears> like <throat> hearing it for whatever reason. It, so mm. I think it helps that the voice is really obvious as well. So like people right. like Trump and Gordon Ramsay, like it's so obvious straight away. If you do just niche people every time, you need to hope your audience knows those niche people and they're going to be able to click onto it straight away. Yeah, it's like somebody said to me, no. I, I, I may have heard this in like a documentary, YouTube video, or whatever, but somebody said in order to be a familiar like celebrity that people know, not athletes because they've got their skills, but like you need to be able to draw them easily as a cartoon character. They <laughs> like they yeah. have to have those kind of like characteristics yeah. like that you can pick out. And I think maybe that's the same with with a voice. Like, do you think there's some people that you just that people can't do impressions of or or yeah, I mean, I, th- I think that's a really good point. I think it really is like cr- like caricaturing in terms of like visual stuff, but it is the same with the voice. It's about picking out a small aspect and like really exaggerating that. Like with Dara O'Brien, like my impression of him isn't like that spot on, but y- you'll notice on Mot the Week, he's always kind of go- he always goes like a eh, eh, like that, and that that is just an example of sort of bringing out like a small aspect. So yeah. <laughs> There are people who aren't particularly characterful, I guess, and you're always looking for people who have like really strong characters. So potentially, potentially there are. Yeah. When, when do you do impressions of like people that are not famous? Like, do you do impressions of your friends and stuff like that? I I, I do. I'm tr- I'm trying to do more sort of like a. I, I guess this is an impression, like characters, like sort of types of people now, as well as doing you know specific people. Because I think it, you know the the bad thing about impressions is if you, if you stand up for an hour and people don't know who you're doing, yeah, then you're mm-hmm. A little bit fucked. Can, yeah. I, can I swear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, some of yeah, the shit we've problem. said. Yeah, fucking yeah. shitting fucks. You really are. Um, so that the advantage of a character is obviously it's like it's a bit broader. So hopefully everyone can kind of get on board with that. Yeah, yeah. I, I saw. I think it was only the other day. I saw you posted a video um, of you. It was either you doing like. I think it was a fuck boy or oh, like yeah, a love yeah, island. A fuck boy, yeah. Fuck yeah, me, yeah. that was so good. But people, I got so many messages after that being like. Where was the character? Like, are people thinking that I actually am like that, which is just <laughs> deeply <laughs> hurtful and untrue? Well, we're going to get right into the core of you as a person now. Good, that's we, why I'm here. We, we want to know. We ask everyone this, and it's probably getting really tedious to the listeners by now. But fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's your go-to meal deal? Oh my go-to meal deal. I, um, go-to. I like I like a barbecue chicken. That's that's my that's my kind of vibe. Yeah, mm-hmm. I like to have a little... like a pack. Of chicken, or are you like, uh, I'm, I'm talking like a rap. I'm a rap. I'm a rap man. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. You wouldn't have thought that looking at me, right? Like I don't really <laughs> look like a rap kind of guy, but I love that shit. Um, <laughs> that's my style. And then I'm always paranoid about losing my voice. It's happened before big shows before, so I'm a I'm a water kind of guy. Mm-hmm. Oh right, Evian, keep yeah. your brand happy. What's your snack? <laughs> um, snack. I might, I might just sit out on that one, you know. I sometimes, really? yeah, I don't fulfil all the meal deal. Like Tesco, he spends one. more getting the wrap on a water. 
I'm not going to get a discount with a snack. <laughs> <laughs> it's a matter of principle. Fair play. Fair play, Fair uh, play mate. Fair play. <laughs> <laughs> Happens all the time. I do that all the time. <laughs> Walking down. The- yeah, fair play. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's an impression of yours that's very unique to you. Yeah. Uh, um. It went. I I I think I've been following you for a while now, but I think it went viral recently. Yeah. Didn't it? Yeah. 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 Which is great. Is that when James actually shared it? Yeah. So for a while, I'd like thought, oh, it would be quite funny to do a video of like James A. Caster making pasta because it rhymes with his name. That's the quality of my comedy. <laughs> <laughs> um. And then I was like, oh, it'd be quite funny to like twist it because he always loves getting to the end of a bit and being like, uh, plot twist. Oh, you thought it was going one way, but actually it went the other completely. And I was like, oh, look, it's not pasta. It's rice. I'm the cover pasta. Fair play, man. I love it. And uh, I posted that. And like a couple of hours later, he, he quoted it being like, yeah, uh, I laugh quite a lot of this, which reflects pretty badly on me actually <laughs> <laughs> really have, have you ever met anyone that, uh, you, that you've done impressions of yeah I've met two of them so I met Andy Murray back in um, <laughs> back in 2017 who's be he was really good but you know the, the thing about Andy is that you know his voice is not the most interesting <laughs> thing in the world <laughs> Um, you know, but he's fantastic and we did a video together. It was like, you know, you should I should interview you as me. So it's like <laughs> how do you feel about Wimbledon? Yeah, I feel really great to be honest. <laughs> uh, we're really struggling to contain my excitement right now. <laughs> do they do they ever fi- I assume uh, he didn't, but like do do you think that it's something that anyone could get offended by or yeah possibly i mean i guess it depends on the like depiction i'm a massive andy murray fan so Mm. i think there's quite a lot of respect and and like uh, adoration there but yeah i think my russell brand impression is probably not the most flattering because i I, I don't i do do you listen to this podcast uh no i've not listened to anything he said for about six seven years good i'm (laughs) glad that you hate him as well (laughs) Um, but i just so my impression of him is kind of like on his podcast he's like Really, mate, I suppose that, like, inherently and intrinsically, <laughs> what is life? Isn't life just really about, like, fundamentally and inherently about theology and colonoscopy and thesaurus <laughs> and, and synonyms? Yeah. I don't know, mate, I was a drug addict for all the noughties. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. So, I mean, that's not a uh, particularly nice <laughs> impression. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, the ones I've met, I did uh, Ed Miliband to Ed Miliband the other day, which was, you know, just really, really great. <laughs> You're sounding like an adenoid, like five pound a five. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, so far it's been fine. <laughs> I feel oh, like, I feel like it's a pretty victimless crime, right? Like you're not actually, sure. would you, would you, would you say, you're not actually taking the piss out of them, are you? Yeah, but no, I, th- I think it comes from a place of like, um, I think it's flattering. You know, there's that saying, imitation is the highest form of flattery. Mm. I, I like, well, I don't like everyone that I do impressions of, but I'm interested in everyone I do impressions of. Yeah. Because they've all got like interesting aspects. Like Russell Brand, I think he says a lot of shite, but he's like very charismatic. Yeah. And it's funny. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, not the best. I suppose <laughs> even that could be looked at the same mm. as like a caricature no one looks at a caricature and goes you've made my nose fucking massive like yeah. you're they know you're not perfecting them like yeah. you do it as close as possible but you, you as you said you're picking yeah. out specific parts and mm. forcing that out like someone would like trump would probably get insulted but yeah that's what he does He's best easily offended i would say yeah the, the irony right yeah. <laughs> yeah. absolutely those bloody snowflakes eh? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 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 How yeah. how important would you say uh, small mannerisms are as much as the voice in a, in an impression? I think it yeah it depends because some of them are quite subtle and then other ones you want to be really sort of over the mm. top. Like Acast is such a sort of character in, in and of himself, so it's not particularly like subtle going like yeah mm. love it. Gotta be careful that my my earphones don't come off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but like there are more subtle like like. Uh, like Louis, Th- you know Louis Theroux from the BBC, with you know his sort of <laughs> his documentaries. It's quite a sort of subtle voice, isn't it? Is it? <laughs> yes. Is it, is it yeah. a bit weird? Yeah. <laughs> and sort of just sort of looking like that, like just staring all of you down, looking <laughs> looking down the camera a little bit as well. Yeah. <laughs> weird. See, that's what I mean. I've not really seen many people or heard Louis many people do, do Louis Theroux. Do you do you think how long would it take you if you had to like? If if we gave you somebody that you'd never mm, done before, mm. like would it would it take you a long time to? Oh, it really depends. It's it's tricky actually because some of them like I've got quite fast. Um, you know, like Prince Harry sort of is maybe like, you know, an afternoon and suddenly I was like, wow, I just sound like I'm really stoned. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. other people, yeah, Russell Brand took a really long time, or like Acaster took a while, and right. yeah, so it, it kind of depends. I have no idea. <laughs> is is there like how? 
when you learn the guitar, you, there's there's stages, isn't there? Like, yeah, right. it's, it's a very clear cut way of, of learning that thing. Is that yeah. is there for you, or do you just sit there and just practice it over and over again? It's there's definitely like a method. So I uh, I did. Um, I don't know if you guys ever listened to Dead Ringers on, on Radio 4. It's like, a, it's like an impressions, like satire show. And like some of the other impressionists on there, it was really interesting to work with them because you, you see what their method is. And their method is literally just listening time and time and time again and just trying to repeat what the person's saying. And then from that, you can kind of work out what are their like go-to vocal mannerisms, what phrases do they like, what words do they like to use. And then from there, you can kind of start to work into it, I, I right. guess. Yeah. yeah, it's it, yeah. That's what that was an, another one of my questions. Actually, like later on, I did want to play like the very generic scenario game where we throw some scenarios at uh, scenarios at you and you answer it in, in said voice. Yeah, that as you pretty much answered it. But how hard is it to say like if we asked you to say like James A. Caster talking about like a an array of dinosaurs? Yeah, you have never probably heard him say those dinosaur names before. Yeah, sure. So, sure. so it, it, does that make the whole thing a lot harder or, or not? I, I, I mean, I think like to use like a metaphor as, as an impression is you're kind of looking for hooks, like vocal hooks to hang on, like hang an impression off, if that mm. makes sense. Mm. So like, you know, obviously with James, there's the sort of going up like this at the end. Uh, there's the sort of the, the slut R thing that's got going on, like sort of like that. Uh, and then other times, <laughs> pause in. <laughs> and go like that. <laughs> so like, you know, I could say like Triceratops, and you'd be like, "Yeah, man, fair play." <laughs> this guy knows about dinosaurs. I love it. I think another positive of never hearing him say Triceratops before is that no one has. <laughs> so you're yeah, not right. going to go. That is not how he say Triceratops. <laughs> <laughs> True, but true. with Acast, there always is the risk, isn't there? Because he probably has done a routine on Triceratops at some point. Like, yeah. He could speak about anything. I love <laughs> I'm him, a, man. I'm a Triceratops man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about you guys. Some T-Rexes in the audience. Fair play. <laughs> I've always found that um, I definitely cannot do impressions. Let's, let's preface that with that. But um, I've always found that when I have maybe been able to get little bits of something, <clears throat> it's always by watching other impressionists. Mm. Yeah. Is, yeah. That, is that a thing? I, it definitely is a thing. Because because like... If you think about like impressions as caricatures and like bringing out small aspects, if you watch another impressionist and they've already done it first, they've kind of done a lot of the work for you. So you can just hop in on that. Mm -hmm. Like I, I remember Schaefer, Schaefer Bates a few years ago doing a really good Gordon Ramsay and like bringing out the, like the sort of like, what the fuck, yeah. you donkey, wow. <laughs> like that, which is like, that, so that's definitely one aspect of his character. And there's obviously the other sort of like, wow, okay, fuck me, not good, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Looks like dog shit, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's not just um, impressions that you do, though, is it? I, yeah, I, do, I just I do a lot of characters and stand up with it and, and and that sort of stuff, which is which is super fun. I don't know if this um, I don't mean this to be offensive in any way, but I, I I'm sure I've heard um, that like on, on sort of documentaries and stuff. A lot of some stand up comics almost look down on impressions. Yeah, right, you know? right. Is, is that something that I you fucking hate it, mate? I think it's awful. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, no, I mean. I think a lot of people, I think Steve Coogan's a really good example of this. He, I feel like, well, he started off doing impressions and then moved into characters and then kind of did acting. And I think people sometimes do look on it as a bit of like a party trick. Mm. And it's, it's it's not enough to just be able to do a good impression. You have to be funny with it. You have to say funny things. Um, and it lends itself to different types of comedy. Like impressions is great for like satire and, and parody and that sort of stuff. But it's, yeah, I, I, I can see why they look down on it because it isn't, in and of itself, necessarily funny. You have to make comedy out of it. Mm. Um, I, but yeah, I feel like some of them. I'm, sh I'm sure because this definitely is not my opinion. I, I, mm. I like impressionists and stuff, but it's it's almost like a quick like like rather than the writing and the timing and the sure. delivery, it's, sure. ju it's just sort of going through that route. It's, but, but where you're you're doing the Edinburgh Fringe, aren't you? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Do Please you, buy tickets. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Do you find that there's um, like a bit of a click with, um, around like events like that with like already established comics or are they quite um, accepting of like new up and coming comics and stuff like that? It's a good question. I mean... <sighs> I of the people I've met and the people that I've gigged with, they've all been really nice and very supportive. And yeah, so I, I I don't really know. I mean, because I was very new and didn't really know that many comics at last year's Edinburgh Fringe, which was my debut. Mm. I didn't really uh, get a sense of like a sort of massive massive clique in comedy. But yeah, I mean, I guess there there are nice and not nice comics, but the ones I've met and have spoken to on on the whole have been have been really supportive. So. Yeah. I, f I feel like a lot of them, and quite rightly so, look down on um, a lot of YouTubers. Like it, right, yeah, it, yeah. In kind sure. of the ways that I was allu alluding to with like the impressions and stuff. Yeah. I think because YouTubers can get views 
for doing fuck all. Yeah, but right. That's right. always like a bit of a worry of my, and that's why I will always never refer to myself as a, as a comedian as sure. much as I may make people laugh. I think and unless you go out and get on that stage, you're not really validated as a comedian. Yeah. Is would you say that's what would I you guess, s- I don't what know. What defines I'm, a comedian? Yeah, but I'm not really a, I'm not really a comedy purist like that. I think if you're making people laugh and you're making people laugh and that, and that's great and there's so many different wonderful forums and like People who think that just stand up is the only like purest form of comedy, like I don't really agree with that. I think there are so many different like sketch comedy is amazing, like um yeah, you know like sitcom acting and all, and all that kind of stuff. Like so yeah, I I, I don't think that makes a comedian. They're, they're, like stand up comedians are people who stand up on a stage and and make people laugh, but mm. comedy shouldn't be confined to that. And anyone who says comedy is confined to that is 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 being too uh, reductive. I think. Do you think? Yeah, because I've I've had some people. I think back in the day, and probably wrongly so, I'd 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 go, yeah, I'm a comedian, I make people laugh. But some sometimes, because I won't say it now, um, mm. I'm just quite self-deprecating anyway in that manner. But I feel like some people will tweet me and go, "Oh, Jack mates best comedian on YouTube," and then other people will be so quick to go, "Yeah, he's not a fucking comedian. He's yeah. not." A comedian. So I always like asking people that I consider to be actual comedians yeah. <laughs> what 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 their kind of opinion on it is, is. because I I feel like with like Sloss. Yeah. Uh, and like Gervais, I don't think. I, well, I know for a fact with Gervais, he didn't consider himself really a comic yeah. until he until we got up on a on a stage and done Interesting. it. Interesting. Do you know what I mean? But then is it? It's kind of like you're not a footballer if you just go and play five a side, are you? Yeah, I, I guess I guess not. But but you know, comparing like professional football and and five a side to like <laughs> stand up versus any other form of comedy, I, I don't know if I quite sort of subscribe to that because I just mm. think. I think writing's a really big part. Like what Ricky Gervais did in The Office, it, for me, made him a comedian. It was a brilliantly yeah. like structured, fantastic yeah. show. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's 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 a specific set of skills, like being able to sort of deal with a heckler or that kind of stuff, and having to own your shit on stage. And it is different, but I don't know. I mean, a lot of shows, a lot of like Bo Burnham is so fantastic, but a lot of his shows were like theatre, right? It's like a theatre hour rather than rather than him sort of interacting with the crowd and all that kind of stuff. So technically you can kind of say, well, that's not, is that stand up? I don't know. Yeah, mm. it is. It isn't. Mm. Yeah, it's yeah. like a full performance, isn't it? Because sure. Bo Burnham's always been very well known for hating interacting with the crowd. Like if he, if he gets a heckler, he tends to just literally tell him to fuck off. So yeah, he yeah, yeah. He will thing. like, just stop. It's just the performance and comedy. So stop it. <laughs> <laughs> that, this, that, that impression gets no love over here, but in the <laughs> States, they, just, well, fuck. <laughs> there's, there's, there's bits um, where he doesn't even say anything on stage. Stage and it's all recordings and he's like psh, psh, yeah psh, and he's just yeah. playing that but yeah yeah i guess it's all up in the air D- did you always want to be a comedian oh no way yeah, no I, I not that i like i i just i, I don't know how many people sort of start <laughs> start their childhood or b- being teenager was teenagers or whatever and thinking oh i'd love to do that i loved comedy i love like sketch comedy i used to love watching like that mitchell and webb look and stuff when i was growing up mm. and, and impressions and stuff but yeah i just think it's so improbable to be like where all of us are, right? So mm, yeah. I never sort of had that confidence to be like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, this this is what I will do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I, it's it's just there's no path. And like, I don't know if you guys find this, but sometimes like family members, particularly in my case, they don't really appreciate because like other jobs have a really clear structure and people mm-hmm. like that because it makes them feel safe. But in our profession, it isn't like that. Yeah, so no, absolutely, mate. It's I'm, hard to aim for it, dude. My mum. Right. <laughs> um, uh, is she a I, fucking I, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, nah, nah, like, I, <laughs> sorry, no, that caused a bit of tension. <laughs> yeah, no, I was just gonna say, like, I've, I've got a degree, and I know, like, my graduation day was one of the proudest days of my life. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it's like, well, actually, but I really enjoy making videos in my bedroom, mum. So yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I don't really want to use that degree. I want to do this, and obviously, I didn't go down too well. But uh, but yeah, so I completely get it. And often, I find it's actually the people closest to you that are the biggest hurdles to, mm. yeah. what, to what you kind of want to do. And I guess it's from a good place. I guess it's yeah, from a place right. of like, you know, that's like you were saying, it's not exactly a, a, an assured path, is sure, it? Sure, sure. You know, so I, I, whereas there's more structure to, to different careers. I feel like with what we do as well, if you, if you bracket it all up in kind of like as entertainers, I guess, mm. 
there's a big difference between the ones who make the money mm-hmm. and the ones oh, that yeah. don't make the money. Mm-hmm. So sure, I think the, cl- sure. the closest ones to you will often like kind of, obviously they don't want to turn you away from doing what, what you want to do. But if you say to them like, oh, I, I really want to like work in business, that's such a broad thing. You could right. just get an entry level job into business and yeah. then, you, and then you're, you've got an annual salary. Yeah. Whereas if you can, be, you can be a YouTuber for 10 years mm. a, a, and you can do the work and not, take the money Reap the like, rewards yeah, sure. any of the money so so yeah. that's that how long have you been doing like comedy on a kind of professional level for? uh since so i i was very lucky to i left university in 2017 and from that point i started working with a with a radio station who like paid me a, a wage to like uh, write comedy for them and like put shows on their on their station uh, union jack radio which is great and then started doing stand-up uh it, or just over a year ago now oh then, really so, yeah, so you're still quite friend. fresh to it yeah then. i'm a fresh-faced young <laughs> young nipper um <laughs> being looked down on by all kinds of comics i imagine <laughs> i'm sure they think i'm a prick <laughs> <laughs> how old are you 22 are you yeah i look haggard i know <laughs> <laughs> i would have never guessed 22 you're massive <laughs> yeah i know <laughs> you, back. you walked in and i was like what the fuck <laughs> I wouldn't be able to look down did on you him. Guys, had you not finished growing at 22? What happened? <laughs> <laughs> I stopped growing way before that. If that's how tall we're meant to be. Yeah. yeah. This is what evolution is meant to produce. <laughs> <laughs> they did this. Yeah. Well, Beer, well, mate. Well, <laughs> What's um, what's your opinion on on YouTubers? Just out of interest, you can be as brutal as you like. If you think no, I, I, th- I, th- I think it depends. Like it, it depends on what kind of you're talking about because it's it's like you know opinion on comedians. It's such a broad. I I love watching um, like generic white influencers, like generic white girl influencers. I find them so funny that I, I will I genuinely I would just sit for sort of 30 to 40 minutes of, of a morning and just sit watching them be like what is up guys yeah so today like I'm gonna go to the shops um I need some food I watched one the other day as I won't name this person but she we're do thinking it. please do, do it. It. <laughs> just do it we well, can always believe it, it. it was with uh well, Bo Heller what, yeah. <laughs> shall we just name a few and see if well let me okay I'll tell the story first and then and then yeah. maybe yeah. Uh, if you don't need but, to name like, them. just just I love how it's just such like non con content because she was talking about how she was doing a vlog about going to the shops to get some food and that was like the whole vlog was like building up to getting the food building up to getting the food and then the shops were shut and, she <laughs> comes home, oh, and she's like man. oh well uh, didn't get the food yeah. uh, and, and that is it and it's like mil- well not millions of views like hundreds of thousands of views and you're just like how is this entertainment I yeah. feel like that's a punchline <laughs> she set the whole thing up she was that. just a really shrewd comedian doing a character yeah. of a white girl and I <laughs> fell for it like a fucking <laughs> yeah. idiot yeah um, there is such a gap in the market for that though for a comedian to now just b- pretend to be a generic fucking vlogger yeah yeah but, but it's, it's a, in my show come see it <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a lot of, that you'd have to tr- get the millions of views by actually being the vlogger which is the, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. The at, at what point do you reveal you do the big reveal going oh yeah joke the whole time yeah <laughs> you'll lose us for watching this <laughs> yeah did you see changing the subject real quick did you see britain's got talent the other night the final yeah yeah did you see the the, the magic guy <laughs> X. Did you see the reveal? Nah. Have bro. you not seen it? I, I don't watch it really. Yeah, yeah it's it's fun. wank. Yeah, it, it is, is wank. Yeah. I'm sorry, <laughs> yeah. I'm That's just gonna say it. I think it's yeah. so bad. Yeah, yeah. It's the final's the, the first one I watched. Well, because I you came around the other day and yeah. we we'd just been for a run, so we were fucked. So it was on, but we were just ten kilometers. Like, I might carry on. <laughs> we were just like fair, fair play. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we were like exorbing it, like we knew it was shit. Yeah. And there was a, <laughs> a guy a, that just twatted himself in the face with a fucking. Yeah, what are they called? Tambourine. Tambourine. Right? This Bang, is the semi final, no, yeah, Josh. No, no. The semi final. He was in a leotard, just smacking his face. He got a fucking standing ovation <laughs> from like Simon Cowell and stuff. And then Simon Cowell, I, I like to think he was being taken No, the he piss, wasn't. But he was. But, he was just like, I don't know if you can turn a pressure Simon uh, Cowell. Annoyingly not. Oh, okay. Oh, well, shit. Well, basically, well, Thanks basically, for trying to see me up. <laughs> <laughs> he just said, I actually think you're going to win the show. Yeah. This guy just twats himself in the face with a tambourine. I did not see that. <laughs> but what I love, just, yeah, it's, it's already the semis. The guy's going, stand an ovation. And then the guy that comes on at the end is like an escapologist. And yeah. Um, yeah. he's got these water bottles on these crossbows. And as they fill up, he apparently can hear when they're, getting to the top they, they he's blindfolded they fire these arrows and he ducks and he ducks and it's really impressive and then the last one comes and it's going straight for his stomach and he holds up this picture of David Williams and it and it <laughs> saves him and he didn't get a sound of an ovation wow. and I thought imagine that like yeah. being the guy that fucking smashes yourself in the face but anyway Disgusting. the reason why I bring up Britain's Got Talent and I have n- I cannot remember why it 
has any reference to what you were speaking about, but I'm, <laughs> I'm sure it was something about a reveal. Was yeah. It? What, oh, you were talking about punchline and social media influence. Gen- you asked about the, the reveal oh. of being a comedian vlogger and Enzo. X, yeah, this has no relation to anything now, so I'll right, just tell okay. you. <laughs> <laughs> but um, there, there's a guy who like does this big illusion, and he was like, there was this big board, and there was all these words, and some were in circles, some were in squares, some were in triangles, and he was like, pick any word, and then he was like, go diagonal to the nearest triangle, go left to the nearest square, and then he was like, your word is hope, and it was like, hang on. If I do that at any word, it's going to... Rev- <laughs> uh, but he's got he's got an anonymous mask on at this point. And then at the end, he's been all the way through the semi. He's now in the final. He's like, I'm now going to reveal who I am. And he took his mask off and everyone went fucking mental. The judges were all over it. And I was like, I'm going to have to Google to see who this guy is. I Googled and he's just a magician that auditioned last year and didn't win. So <laughs> really? <laughs> they were like, that's incredible. I was like, he's still not won though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I- imagine hoodwinking Amanda Holden. Like... <laughs> <laughs> he came second though. Fucking, yeah, he? yeah, he came second. But I'm like, all that. I'm like, his act is that he's just told you to pick a. He's he's literally said, pick hope. Your words hope, <laughs> right? and, and then he's gone. And also, by the way, I've got been you. here before. I know he was from last year, yeah. and they've gone. Send him through. <laughs> <laughs> that Fuck reminds me. me. Can you remember Rick Lax? Every time I'd scroll through no. Facebook, there's this guy who just put magic on there and it'd be exactly the same thing. Go, look at these free cards. Yours is going to disappear. It'd pick up three completely different cards. <laughs> well, yeah, all three of them fucking disappeared. Fucking shit. <laughs> who, uh, going back to you, Josh. <laughs> I enjoyed um, that. I well, we have a guest. <laughs> yeah. Who were your um, comedy inspirations before you really got into it? Yeah, I, I mean, I really, uh, I, Bo Burnham is fantastic. I remember actually watching his his show, Make Happy, on yeah. Netflix and, and thinking, well, I would love to do this. I'd love to do stand-up as a result of that because he's just so fantastic. I mean... <laughs> so fantastic. People are great. <laughs> uh, I, I like it. I mean, I like them all. I think, I think, I think when you start doing comedy, like I don't, I, I, I like and can appreciate like most stand up, I think, because you can see what they're doing and you can see sort of how they're putting bits together. I, I, I quite like Josh Whitaker and it's got that sort of thing. Because he's sort of sounding like a hobbit and simultaneously looking like one as well. <laughs> I think he's great. And, um, you know, Tom Allen, Tom Allen, that great voice like that. Oh my God. I love it. I know. I know. Um, I'm trying to just shoehorn in some more impressions. Uh, <laughs> well, we, we can play the impression game if you yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. Just, oh, I, I mean, just one more. Stuart Lee is amazing, mm. and I think a lot. But I don't want to be one of those like young comedians who you see who are like, oh, Stuart Lee's so great, mm. and they just end up doing a bad Stuart Lee impression for their whole act because it's really rife. Like, oh, I'm a cynical, embittered. Yeah, guy. but he's taken that, so like no, no one else is allowed that. And I'm sorry, yeah, obviously, obviously James Acaster. Fair play. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite interesting that you touched on that though, because I, we said to we had Daniel Sloss on a few weeks ago, and um, I said to him that my big worry through growing up and being a massive, massive Gervais fan, yeah, is that I couldn't help but pick up loads of Gervaisisms, sure. Brentisms, and stuff like that. And for a long time, and I mean the listeners and the uh, and the viewers will know because I always bang on about this, but for the longest time I didn't care because I was like I just need to make people laugh mm. and I was just ripping off this guy's act mm. and and mm. now it's all about trying to find like my own feet within comedy and hopefully sure. one day actually do it to a to a more professional level but you've 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 got a fairly unique like d- delivery and and stuff like that is it hard for you to remove your the influencers when you do do your your show yeah I'm, I think what helped for that is cuz Shut up. <laughs> Shut up, mum. <laughs> Text to me, I love you, bitch. <laughs> She's wonderful. I'm very lucky to have her. Um, my I... mum's a bitch. Just call my mum a bitch. Yeah. Like, Jack, no, I can't do that. I can't do your poor mum. No, she is. <laughs> oh, she won't be listening. Right, she's bitch. an alcoholic. Um... <laughs> So she has no ears. No, nah, she's got better things to do. There's drink. alleyways. There's alleyways. <laughs> Just drink. Oh, man. You don't get Wi-Fi in the alleyways. <laughs> oh, jeez. Lam- Lambrini in an alleyway. <laughs> um, yeah, well, it, uh, so I, really, I think that's a great question. It was it difficult to remove the influences when I was performing? I, 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 again, like when I first started, I kind of, because I think going on stage is such a, uh, a confident, like something that requires so much confidence and you feel really naked up there when you first start doing it. I did do that. Like I, I was, it was like a sort of weak impression of Bo Burnham, like for a lot of what I was starting to do. But you have to sort of, I think uh, like the more stand up I've done, the more confident I've become on stage and thought, well, actually, no, like if I present something that's much closer to myself, like it's still funny and it's probably funnier actually like being confident in what I think rather than just doing an impression of someone else. And so it, a lot of it's just getting comfortable in that forum, I guess, mm. and being like, 
Well, actually, I think what I think is funny is legit. And if an audience don't always like that, that's that's all right. But yeah. How, yeah. how do you... Di- because again, I've said this to many comics um, I've had on. Uh, the, the thought of... I think I can be funny, but I don't know... I, d- I don't... At the moment, I don't have the fucking balls to do it. And it's yeah. just, at the moment, I'm, I'm a self proclaimed pussy right I, I i can't get up there and do it as, sure. and, and and i mean obviously my biggest inspiration gervais has told mm. me do it do it i've yeah. done little bits here and there i haven't yeah. ever really pushed it so if i've got someone like that telling me to do it yeah. why am i not do it like what how hard was it for you to first like really get up on the stage like i'm sure you've done like small gigs here there, yeah, and everywhere. Sure. but like somewhere like the edinburgh fringe like that's yeah. a different level now you've got your peers there watching you judging yeah, you like, yeah 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 are yeah. you a, were you a nervous she person me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I i do still get quite nervous actually like i think before i go on I, yeah i am pretty uptight i it's it's weird because there's a there's such a massive difference between doing like a 10 minute spot a 20 minute spot and then like an hour I don't like 10 minutes. I find I find it hard to like build stuff up. Whereas an hour you can build a rapport with an audience and like, you know, get all that kind of stuff together. Mm. I found it, um, I did find it quite difficult, but I just kind of didn't think about it. I know that sounds really stupid, but you just, you just do it. Mm. You just do it because you're like, well, the only way that this is going to go well is if I believe in myself. Because if I think I'm going to be shit, then I really will be shit. Yeah. <laughs> if I think I'm going to be good, then I might still be shit, but I give myself the best, best chance, I guess. Yeah. So that was kind of <laughs> my thinking. Have you, um, how did you first real geek go it was all right actually it was it wasn't that terrible i have died on my ass before that was a, a, a harrowing it's a, it's is just so humiliating yeah. your, i was like sweating and like it was awful but no the first gig was was fine and i i think because i'd done like loads of impressions of like cuz i started doing when i first started doing impressions when i was like 16 i was doing loads of tennis players when i was really young and like so i i was used to performing if if you like and like impressions you kind of do by yourself so mm. i'd done a lot of them but yeah, I mean, it, it it was fine, but I watch it back now and I cringe, cringe horrific. Yeah, but how, when you when you're there, you're doing a gig. Say you're doing twenty minutes, mm. you're ten minutes in, you think this is going awful. Yeah, how do you just not crumble like a little kid in a school nativity and yeah. run off crying? Like you, how- uh, you were, well, it depends on your act. But like uh, I listened to Catherine Tate say something really interesting about this because before she did like characters, she did a lot of stand up, and she said just just bin your material, just bin it and chat to people. Because you have that is the only way. Because if your material's not working and they don't like it, it's not going to win them round by the end, or it's pretty unlikely. So just yeah, there's there's such a big benefit of uniting a room by chatting to people. A friend of mine, Tom Lucy, is a great stand-up, does that so well. He's brilliant with like chatting to people, and it just wins a crowd over, and then they're kind of more receptive to the material that you want to give them. I oh, think. fair. Do do you? How often do you get heckled now? Um, I had a, I did the Brighton Fringe uh, last weekend, and a comic heckled me. A guy in the back. What? What? Yeah, I know. I, he was like, I mean, it was, I think it was a bad decision to say. He was I was like, uh, you know, heckled me, and I was like, oh, what, what do you do, mate? And he was like, uh, I'm a comic. And I said, mm, and how's that going? Because <laughs> like, yeah, why would you come to someone else's show? I mean, yeah, I just thought that was a really weird thing. I've never been heckled. Maybe he wasn't a comedian, or maybe he was an undercover cop pretending to be a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should um, jump straight into a, a little scenario game. Yeah, let's do it. I mean, we're not we're not breaking any boundaries here. It, it, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit you with uh, with a few. I think we've got seven seven uh, celebrities. Nice seven scenarios. Nice all all. Um, all sort of voices I know you can do. Yeah, okay. I, I, I'm not just going to say, dude. I can give you some for free at the end as well, if you like. We yeah. can even, yeah, we can okay. throw them in. <laughs> okay, right. Uh, um, we'll, we'll just j- jump straight into it, see how we go. So first of all, yeah, Conor McGregor yeah. can't get out <laughs> of some skinny jeans, so he kicks off. My, what the fuck is that all about? I can't get the, what the fuck? Jesus Christ. Well, how the fuck did I get into these at the begin with? Yeah. <laughs> You're a bum. It's my bum. I can't get my bum out of these fucking jeans, man. Louis fuck Farouk you. is confused by the concept of or- <laughs> bits in orange juice. Right. So, are, are you sort of, are you saying that, you're saying that orange juice, isn't it smooth? Is it smooth? Have you, have you seen that? Is that, Am I making that up? Is that a bit? That seems like something that someone will make up about me. It's, are they a bit weird? It's just a bit weird. <laughs> Ian, yeah. Ian Sterling commentates on Trump arriving in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight in the UK, <laughs> Donald Trump looks incredibly awkward next to the Queen. Bigly great. Believe me, folks. <laughs> I, I think I've done this before, but I'll do it again. I don't care. 
<laughs> so great. James Acaster tries weed for the first time. Fair play. <laughs> I love it, man. <laughs> what? You, you ever wonder why? If uh, if p- petrol is uh, so bad for humans, why does it smell so good? <laughs> Boris, yeah. Boris Johnson um, refuses to answer a question during a podcast. <laughs> Move on. <laughs> Gordon Ramsay actually loves Weatherspoon's food. Wow. Fuck me, Jesus Christ. It is absolutely fucking great. No donkeys at all in Weatherspoon's. Wow, 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 wow. Fuck me. Wow. Yes. Andy Murray wins 10 million quid on a scratch card. Yeah, this is the <laughs> this is the happiest I've ever been in my life. Uh, <laughs> that's good. That's good. I like that. That's yeah, all the scenarios got, I've got. Any, uh, any any for David Mitchell? Any scenarios for David Mitchell? Yeah. Go on, yeah, Stevie. Tubby head. What? Are you uh, about? Come on, Stevie. Yeah, pick one. Yeah, go on, mate. Fucking hell! I didn't realize I was being put on the spot. Well, 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 uh, uh, David, David Mitchell, Ren boy, something like that. <laughs> yeah, go on. <laughs> oh yes, that's right. You're a very, very naughty boy. <laughs> Surely. No, sorry. Hang on. You're not a naughty boy. Who would even want to be a naughty boy with David Mitchell? I tell you what, <laughs> certainly not me. And I, I, I'll say another thing. <laughs> oh, no, that's good. Very good. I, I, I think now, I didn't tell you two that I was going to do this. Oh, no. Here we go. But I'm going to get you both to do, do an impression. Oh, <laughs> and, then, yeah. and then you've got you've got to rate them. And you can be brutally okay. honest because they're going to they're gonna be... I cannot even do accents. I literally can, could not do I anything. I actually all of a sudden feel fucking nervous. Well, that's there you go. Wow. <laughs> there you go. I like that. Right. I inspire fear. Okay. That's really... Yeah. Uh, thank you. <laughs> all right. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll try one if you like. That's all right. Um, you're gonna go straight in. I've got, yeah, I got one. Are you gonna um, say who it is for, just just to be I'll, safe? Say no, who it no, is I first. don't need. I will say who it is. I don't need to because bloody obvious. <laughs> okay, brilliant. Um, so as you know, I'm friends with Schaefer, and he bloody loves my impression of this. So, so if you don't, if you're I wrong. Don't, yeah, I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah. Hold on to your seats because this is this is Marge Simpson. <laughs> It's fucking dreadful, I need to say, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have to look at you in the eyes whilst this happens? Or? <laughs> I literally just say two words. I'm just going to say, hey, homie. Okay. Ready for this? <clears throat> I can't do it. <laughs> hey, homie. That's not... Okay. Yeah, that's, that's pretty right. good. Yeah, well, yeah. I'll save the rate. <laughs> am I rating out of 10 or am I saying you? Wh- wh- who won? No, no, no. You can you can rate you that can, out of 10. I give that a, a, a good 7.5. What? That was not that good. I oh, know. That was pretty I'm good, I'm taking man. that. Yeah, yeah, fuck me. That'd get a laugh on, on stage. <laughs> yeah. For being shite. Yeah. <laughs> but it does last Chilled. for about two seconds and you've got nothing <clears> else. <throat> well, I could say other things. Some of the best things last for two seconds. Jordan. Uh, I'm gonna. It's it's such a. <laughs> you look so unenthused. It's such an overdone <laughs> impression. Uh, I'm gonna go for Harry Redknapp. Oh, you going Harry Redknapp? I'll go yeah. Harry Redknapp. I you were gonna go Carragher. You're gonna go Jamie Carragher. No, I'll, I'll give just we'll a both. chance. No, <laughs> I could do both. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Uh... <laughs> Why are you so nervous? I know. I'm Relax. sweating. I'm a nice, I'm a nice yeah. guy. So I'm not going to hurt you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, right, okay. Um... <laughs> I have, I have so never I'm, seen George. I'm, 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 I'm about 180 over fucking 120. <laughs> nah, um... <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, uh, the best drug I ever worked with probably Bobby Zamora. I'd probably say Bobby Zamora. He's well up there. I mean, and you, you got the likes of Lucas Moore at the moment, but the best Bobby, the best Zamora at the moment is, is Bobby Zamora. That's good. Know. And then you got Jamie Carragher. Um, oh God. <laughs> oh, I, should, I should have just kept, went straight into it because it's sort of you know adrenaline dump now. Um, yeah, no. Um, I will tell you what, mate. Fair play for what you do because I'm fucking oh, yeah. like you know. Um, fair play. Um, <laughs> no, that's why yeah. James. Yeah. That's, why, that's why I do all the ketamine, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Relax, mate. Um, I don't. <laughs> um, so I'll tell you the problem with Pogba, right? <laughs> the problem with Pogba is that it's not. He just he lacks creativity. You know, that's, that's, yeah. that's, that's yeah. really that's, good. Yeah. That one's one. great. Oh yeah. fuck off, Jordan. I thought they were both three. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah. we I said a, two words. We have a winner. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Jack still needs to go. Oh, yeah, but my game was I'm to, all get, flustered. to get you two to You must it. have a Ricky Gervais. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been doing it for 10 years. Mate. <laughs> no, I think I can do um, a little bit of Stewie. Hey, Brian. Hello. That was good, yeah. Brian. Where's Rupert Brian? 
and that's that. That's <laughs> really <laughs> that. I couldn't really hear you in that at all. Which Could you is not? Really, yeah, yeah, it was good, man. It's like we were speaking about just yeah, when you came in, but obviously you did my, uh, you did a little voiceover for my Love Island video. I certainly did, mate. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and one of the comments was, "I can't believe Jack can do this impression." I was yeah. Like, when you hear an impression like like that's ever gonna be me. When when you hear an an imp- a, a famous impressionist do an impression. Yeah. Do you think you could hear the impression and know what impressionist is doing it, or is that impossible? Yeah, no, I, th- I think I probably could if if I'd heard them before, because everyone has like a slightly different take. So right. some people's like, um, you might not know this guy called Lewis McLeod, but his Donald, his Donald Trump is like very sort of like that, and it's very sort of open mouth. Um, whereas other people's are uh, like John Coulter's is a little bit more defensive, Donald. It's more like that, more a little bit softer, softer. Like, <laughs> so it's you kind of see, yeah, you you can you can tell. Well, right why do you think they're so different if they're about the same person? Is there are they both right? Is there I mean, a- yeah, I I think kind of like what we were talking about earlier on, like impressions being caricatures. It's just different look at the same voice right so and, and it is quite a subtle difference i think you probably have to do impressions to spot it i i would imagine but yeah i mean it's they're, they're both legit they're both great impressions i think have you ever tried to do an impression like you really wanted to know someone's voice and do yeah. it and you just can't is there anyone you've really flopped at and you've just given up i wanted to um <clears throat> trying to get a lewis capaldi but i haven't i haven't had a proper chance to, to look at that one yet but i think he'd be a great one. Oh yeah it would, people would respond well to it as well yeah, yeah. Just because he's so like, well, I'm so weird. <laughs> I wish you could, because then we'd actually have him on the fucking podcast. He was meant to come on. Oh, put, really? Yeah. Oh, fuck. Is he, he still, is he still going to come on? Um, they're telling me he is, but <laughs> it's one of them. He's not got any bigger fish to fry. That's what <laughs> he agreed, and then he got a number one song, but we're not... <laughs> What a sellout. We're not annoyed. What no, we're not going to sell out. No, he's busy, man. Yeah. Let him off. He's in America at the moment, to be fair. So. That won't last forever. <laughs> it'll come crashing down. <laughs> yeah. It's way it'll back come, down. Yeah. It'll come crawling back, That's and you'll be it. like, fuck off, like, Lewis. Yeah. <laughs> I like how he comes to us on his way back down. Like, oh, yeah. no, <laughs> they're good enough. Guests only come on when they've got nothing else to do. Isn't that right, Jeff? <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, uh, I actually I had a funeral, but I came here. <laughs> <laughs> Comedy, tragedy. That's <laughs> it. Well, what's um, what's next for you? Obviously, have you done Fringe again? But... Yeah, yeah, I'm doing the Fringe. Uh, I am. Uh, I have just come to the end of my uh, like impression series on on Union Jack Radio, which is on like Apple Podcasts and stuff, which okay. is uh, which has been super fun. Um, but yeah, just between now and Edinburgh, it's just like going around different theatres and, and doing my show. So. Okay, nice. that's fun. That's nice, fun. decent. So people can, if people want to find you, it's JB Impressions on Twitter. Yes, and uh, at Josh Berry Impressions on Instagram. And it would be very good to get to 10k followers so what? I can do swipe up and say more shit. Thank you. <laughs> what are you on now? Uh, well, I'm at 9.5 something, 9,500 and something. So I'm trying to... <laughs> we'll yeah. get you to 9.6. <laughs> You're welcome in advance. <laughs> and um, yeah, we just want to finish on a couple of hypothetical questions. Cool. A of... Like Acaster's show. Hypothetical. Love it. <laughs> oh yeah, fuck. I knew we'd robbed it from somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so the, the the first one's a bit dark, a bit deep. Nice. Um, you you can uh, you can even answer this in an array of voices if Great. you like. If you like. Um, so right, um, <clears throat> you've got a bag. It's got a hundred balls in it. All the balls you've heard this. Mm. It? It's a bit dark. Yeah. Um, hundred balls. Ninety nine of them are blue. Yeah. One one of them is red. Yeah. If you pick if you pick out a blue ball, yeah, you get a million pounds. You can have as many picks as you want. Yeah. But if you pick that red ball, you get stage four cancer. <laughs> now there's a reason I say that yeah. specifically and not just you die. Because yeah, a lot yeah. of people used to just say to me, Oh, I'll just have a couple of goes and if I die, I die. Yeah. But it's like, no, I you need to live in some kind of pain for this <laughs> you know, for the for this to you work. Have you to go- suffer <laughs> yeah. in some sense. Yeah. There has to Great. be some jeopardy to this to this. Wow. Ha- are you gonna have a pick? Yeah. And if so, how many are you going to have until you stop? Can I can I just run away? What, what not have any picks? Yeah, 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 not yeah. have any picks. You don't have to have any picks. I would do that. I'm terrified of death, even though it's coming for us all, including yeah. you listeners. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's an irrefutable fact. Uh, but true. I would like to prolong my life. for, And even, uh, that's so. I, I know it's totally irrational, right? Because mm. it's like one to a hundred. Mm. Yeah. But it's totally irrational. I was supposed to get an impression there. Um... Uh, how about Dan Ratcliffe? Wow, uh, God, I'm so awkward. Um, and you know, I just wish I was around women because the only the last time I was around a 
woman was Emma Watson, and um, <laughs> she was paid to be there, to be honest. So. <laughs> no, that's good. I, I have always consistently said I wouldn't even have one pick. And yeah, some, nice. And, and some people think that's that's weird. But you said four. I'd be, yeah, between three four. and five, I'd say. Wow. Three, okay. five. You've got 1% chance. I, I like Next how... time you've got like 1.3%. Like, it's such a minimal amount. I like yeah. how Daniel's last was like, three. Straight, Straight away. Really? He didn't even three. think about yeah. it. <laughs> but I mean, to be fair, uh, the standoff, uh, the stand up to Cancer Bake Off thing, they were like, uh, one in two of us will get it at some point in our lifetime, which is a really nice and uplifting way to keep the podcast going. So I'm glad. <laughs> that, yeah, that um, is mental. Yeah. That is uh, so actually, you probably should have a pick, right? <laughs> yeah, because you're getting like, it regardless. You're going to die, and you're, we're all going to suffer. We will. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, how many? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd put three or four. Would you? Yeah. Wow. I'd be too terrified of getting that fucking yeah, one yeah, ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know yeah. with my luck, like, I would get the fucking ball. Yeah. yeah. But imagine how, like, imagine that. Oh, actually, do you know, probably just one. Because imagine the the feeling when you pull it out. And it's blue, but and it's, it's like, oh my god, oh, I'm yeah. not gonna get. And then it's like, oh fuck, and I got a mill. Yeah, oh, sweet. But, but but that's how gambling fucks you because you get one, yeah. you get a little dopamine. Exactly. Yeah. You'll probably get to Ooh. 99, still yeah. not get it. Go fuck ah, it. Like, yeah. 50, 50. <laughs> yeah, you get punched. Oh, right. You're like, oh, this is fucking bullshit. Come on. <laughs> yeah. I won the red one now. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Right. The next yeah. one. So you you stumble across a book. Yeah. And um, you you begin reading it, and you soon realise that it's a biography of your life. Yeah. Um, oh. Oh God! Uh, oh. Oh. <laughs> and you get to the you get to the present. Yeah. Do you keep reading? I burn it. I burn it straight away. I don't want to know. I really? Don't, yeah, I don't, I'm terrified. I'm terrified of the future. But what? Living in the past. But what? what <laughs> Imagine you look at it. It's like fuck. That's thin. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Because that would have told me. Yeah. yeah. Just like you see the remaining pages Why are blank. Yeah. Four yeah. 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 That's, that's what Robbie Knox said. He said, "Imagine if you pick up a like a pamphlet." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, um, what, yeah. But what if you just skip like three chapters and yeah. you see that you're fucking headlining like the biggest comedy show in the world next yeah. year? Yeah. You've yeah. Not yeah. Got, you, you've not got anything to worry about then but you could skip three chapters and see your inevitable death you pick the red yeah. ball <laughs> but also yeah. like i'm a you know uh, a privileged middle class white guy anxiety is all we have <laughs> um, <laughs> i will have something to worry about even if i was headlining i'd be like oh man i'll just worry about something insignificant <laughs> problems yeah. don't go away i think life like life as things get better in your life your problems don't go they just don't matter right like mm. if you've got loads of money yeah like it, fredo's being 45p instead of 10 that mm. is that that is bullshit. Yeah. But like, <laughs> it really is. But like middle class mums complaining about like I, it's just not on the way they've got not enough wheatgrass at Jonty's school. It's just <laughs> just not on. Um, like that's not a legitimate problem. Yeah. It just but it yeah. is still a problem. Yeah. 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 Would you Would you read yours? Wow. I don't know. Because I, I feel like it's there's the... pros and cons. There's pros and cons. If you read a little bit and you like what you were reading, you'd keep reading. Yeah, and and, and, and and that's where it'll fuck you. But then, it, is it changeable? No, no. I definitely. It doesn't matter then, no. does it? Really? Oh, okay. No. It doesn't matter, because. But then that's like, would you know your death date if you could know your death date? No. Oh god. Exactly, and you don't know within that. a couple of chapters whether your death date's there. But yeah. I wouldn't mind knowing my death date it was, if it was a long way in the future, and I'm like, cool, I've got good innings. If it's like yeah. tomorrow, I'd be like, oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah, yeah. it's That'd like when shit, people. Uh, I hate the phrase, "I'll live every day like it's your last." No, I'll be fucking crying <laughs> in the corner of my room. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm not going to go to Alton Towers for a whiz around. <laughs> That's yeah. literally right. how I live my day, so I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> but also, like, some people might like realize it was their last day and just take a lot of drugs, and it's like, well, you can't mm. do that every day, mate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, well, maybe you can <laughs> talk, talk to Russell Brand, he knows. <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh, uh, so does my mum. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, right. Okay, there we go. Josh Berry, it's been an absolute pleasure. No, thanks for having me. Thank it's been you. really fun. And uh, Louis Ferru as well. Thanks for coming on, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Has it been a bit weird for any of you? <laughs> 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 yeah. And uh, James, a caster, you're, you're a fucking legend. Yeah. I love it, man. Fair play to you. <laughs> Anyone, anyone else? Anyone? <laughs> Go on, any and Sterling. <laughs> Mate, it's been an absolute pleasure. Honestly, it's really put into context smoking like 50 cigarettes a day, mate. I love it. I'll tell you what, we can actually finish the podcast on almost as if like Ian Sterling is wrapping up an episode oh, nice, of Love Island. Nice, do, you, do you fancy nice. doing yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. So before we get into it, guys, go check uh, Josh out on all, the, on all good forums. Stevie, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Jordan, thank no you very problem. much. Ian, I'll leave it to you. Tonight, or whatever time you're listening, to Jackmates Happy Hour Podcast. It's been a podcast of highs, lows, 
bits in the middle. Other bits in the middle. I don't really know how to finish this, so I'm just going to say Love Island. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers, guys. See you next week. Bye. Thank you.